Impact Lounge is the number one YouTube channel for fans of Impact Wrestling. Make, make a, make a, uh, a good, good lucha, lucha thing. That is just a fact of life. Hello, welcome to the Adam and Roe show on the Impact Lounge. I'm your host, Adam, and as always, Roe, are you out there? Yes, I'm here. How are you doing, Adam? Really good. And obviously, the week after Bound for Glory. And uh, before we dive into all these things, all the news that's come out of this week from New York and the like, uh, I just want to thank every single one of our listeners and commenters last week. For anyone who gave us a thumbs up or a thumbs down, uh, thank you very much. And just make sure you hit subscribe on youtube just so they can catch this show each and every week um for those of you stopping by for the first time just to give you a bit of a breakdown of what we do here uh we used to cover the reviews on the channel but uh, I, uh adam and ro i'm adam uh ro and i uh we, we now are doing a bit more of a of a looking at this week's news and just talking about what's been going on in the world of impact now we are going to touch a bit on bound for glory and just give brief views but do check out the review that we've got on the channel already this uh week it's not ro and myself but uh yeah just uh, make sure you do check out the content and the best way to do that is of course by subscribing so hit that big red button at the top right um so what we do on the show as i said we cover the news but we also always throw out a trivia question to start so i'm going to ask ro to cover last week's question and tell us who was the first person to get it right uh congratulations to ak infinity because the correct answer was tigre uno um for people who might not remember i'm gonna say around 2015 they were doing the Bound for Glory series, and he actually wrestled Gail Kim and came up victorious. And then, obviously, he's a former exhibition champion. I believe he captured the championship in a triple threat match with Loki and uh, I forgot the other participant. And then finally, they ran an angle around the time of uh, Donald Trump's, uh, you know, he, when he was running for office, and uh, he called out Donald Trump. Impact ran an angle and uh, <laughs> didn't really gain the steam that I guess they liked. But congratulations, uh, AK Infinity. Uh, T. Gray Uno is the correct answer. Yeah, so before we get into uh, last week's comments and the news, uh, we'll set this week's question. And it's going to be a bit different this week because usually we give you clues as to one person. But I'm going to make it much broader because uh, we're getting more listeners now. So I, I want to try and make it a, a bit more difficult. But also I, I expect we're going to see a lot of wrong answers this week. So... The question is, since TNA started back whenever it was, uh, several years ago, let's put it that way, um, I have got a list here in front of me of all the matches that have ever taken place and the number of matches each wrestler has had. So my question is, is not who has had the most matches on Impact TNA television, because I think we'd all guess that was AJ Styles. What I want to know is, who is second and third on that list? So basically, I need both names of who has had the most matches, but not AJ Styles, he's top. I just want to know who has had the second most matches and who has had the third most matches. And I don't care if you're getting the wrong way around. Uh, just let us know what you think. So quite a simple question. And, and I've got to say, I completely stumped Ro on this before we started recording. He had no idea. So uh, that's how difficult this one is. I've got to be honest, I guess number two, I most probably wouldn't have guessed number three. So there you go. Right, uh, so just diving into last week's comments. Thank you for, for all the stuff. Obviously, a lot of it was around, you know, the, the, the time of the show uh, being moved on, on pop and those kind of things and what the network deal is going to look like going forward. I think there's been breaking news this week that Canada are also moving their time slot uh, for Impact Wrestling. So uh, we're not going to cover that same ground again today. But uh, the one comment I wanted to pick up on, and, and I'm sure Ro might have one or two as well, possibly, is uh, I just wanted to thank uh, Brown Pants, uh, first time listener to the show. Uh, who uh, obviously thought uh, I do a fantastic job on here. He, he didn't really mention Ro, so I mean, it must have been just down to me uh, that he liked, but uh, bad now. I'm sure he liked you as well, Ro. So yeah, so thanks to Brown Pants. So hopefully you tuned in this week as well. Um, was there anything on, on the, the comments last week, Ro, that, that caught your eye that you want to talk about? Um, it, and just because it was, excuse me, not one particular one, it just seemed like a common theme. You have a lot of people split. There are people in favor of, and, um, of me as far as saying that they should stay on a network. And then there were people that were in your corner saying that they don't need a network. And that's always interesting, um, just to see the different views. I mean, a lot of people just think that, you know, 
uh, they can they don't need to be on a network they can do things uh, you know stream service or other channels and then you had some who thought you no know, more I'm thinking of like how I was thinking as far as they need some type of network so um, that was pretty much a common thing so thanks for everyone for sharing their thoughts on that I had final final just comment from myself uh, Michael Peacock also commented on the Russo stuff I said that I was a, a big fan of his style of booking although not him as an individual uh, I think Michael Peacock was agreeing with me um, so yeah I uh, would like to hear more of those thoughts on, on what you think of Russo as well would you welcome him back into the creative team to spice things up uh, what about you bro would you welcome him back no, and not that I'm this, you know, on the I hate Vince Russo bandwagon. I think it's more in lines of, you know, he represented a time of wrestling. I don't want to even act like it was like ages ago, but I think his mind is, um, is it okay to say outdated maybe? Yeah, I think so. Um, yeah, maybe stuck in 80s booking, 80s, 90s booking. But I, I would welcome it back because, you know, I like a bit of shock and awe. And it's one of the things that, you know, I, I've said uh, on the preview show for Bound for Glory that we did with BQ that uh, I wanted to see some surprises at the show. And we didn't really get that, um, you know, with debuts and things like that. You know, we're all expecting Chris Jericho. So, you know, I think Russo would, would, would most probably do that, uh, bring back some of those shocks that uh, you know that I used to like when I watched wrestling growing up. Anyway, um, we're already six minutes into the show, so we better crack on with this week's news. But before we do, I think you wanted just to very quickly touch on Bound for Glory. Yeah, um, just my quick thoughts. Um, I thought overall it delivered. It met my expectations. I mean, I don't think it top slam anniversary. I don't think a lot of people thought that, but it was better than the last two. And you know, I'd say this for. Sammy Callahan to get that win over Brian Cage and give Brian Cage his first defeat. I thought that was a big deal just because we've seen in the past with Sammy Callahan, you know, he's been one of the lucky guys who can, you know, lose so many high profile matches and not it not affect his status. So for him to get this big win, I feel like it's going to go a long way and look forward to see what him and Brian Cage can do. And then obviously for Johnny Impact, um, he finally climbed the, the top of the mountain uh, capturing the Impact World Championship. So to my knowledge, I don't think he's captured any world titles in any other the, the promotions he might have been in. Correct me if I'm wrong, listeners. So now this is the Johnny Impact era. Um, he's been given the ball to see what he can do with it. I was been of the mindset that his reign will be short, but I'm willing to give it a shot. And I think when I'm talking short, seen, since you know a lot of these episodes are taped, you know, it could be a couple months, and I think that'll be fine for him. So, congratulations to Johnny Impact and Sammy Callan. Yeah, my, my overall, you know, my takeaway from it was that you know LAX is still the best tag team in the world, better than the Young Bucks. Uh, prove me wrong, somebody, uh, because I, I I just think LAX are just amazing. Uh, secondly, I think that they're still booking Eli Drake incredibly bad, and we're going to touch on that in a second. Um, but yeah, I wasn't, wasn't a fan of that segment at all. And, you know, really by now, six months after signing his contract, they really should have found something for him. Uh, anyway, so, so there were my two main, and, and, you know, Tessa Blanchard is, is the champion. And as I predicted last week, I'm not saying I am the foreseer of the future, but I, I am, and let's face it. I predicted Tyre versus Tessa was going to be match of the night. And could you disagree with that? Ro. That, that was the one that stuck out. I, I mean, I really thought they had four. If I had to pick my four matches from the card, you know, it was one, you know, probably the one or two. I, I will add this. I think the the Concrete Jungle match, I think that was a prime example of on paper. It sounded good, but then just the execution because I found myself watching that and just I feared for the wrestlers. It just seemed so dangerous. So that's just kind of one of those things that happens from time to time. But... Yeah, that Taya in Tessa match, it delivered, and I'm glad it looks like we're getting an uh, extended feud between the two. Yeah, correct. All right, so let's grab into the news then. And one of the, the, the things, obviously the big story coming out of it is all about Austin Aries, and we'll come back to that in a second. But I mentioned in my takeaway from Bound for Glory, uh, Eli Drake's open challenge. And one of the things that came out in the news this week was they were originally trying to get someone called Joey Janela 
uh, hopefully I've said it right. I'll be honest with you, I know nothing about this guy, but he was the guy that they wanted about a month ago, which is when they would have taped the Mexico tapings, you know, with the New York Challenge, those kind of things. So um, that was the guy, but then he injured himself, which is why they brought in James Elworth. I also heard they tried to get Loki at the last second to come in. Uh, he didn't want any part of it. Thank goodness is all I can say on that one, although I do like Loki. Um, but yeah, Joey Janela, do you think that it would have been a better segment had it been him? I mean, I'm not too familiar, from, excuse me, familiar with his work, but of course, because we would have been getting a debut, I've always thought with these open challenges, they're killing two birds with one stone. They're using it as a way to introduce somebody new to the roster well, giving Eli something to do. Um, Look, I'm not going to crap on them bringing in the replacement that they brought just because you know that was uh unfortunate circumstances you know the person who they had envisioned had got injured what i will say is it comes to show you the difference between the impact fan base versus you know fans of other promotions because ellsworth when he came out a lot of that stuff that might have went over in his previous employer people weren't buying that and as far as you know him and, and people were critical as far as um this is what they're doing for eli i'd rather eli face somebody like him and just run through him than get, bring in somebody to beat eli if that makes sense you know because i I, th I, th I think i think the whole part of the eli open challenge is to build him back up where now you know he can get back in that main event and challenge you know with now the new champion johnny impact so I, I wasn't too mad. I just, if anything, I was just like, it just comes to show you some of the people who come over from these previous companies, they're not going to go over like they thought. And you could tell uh, Ellsworth was uncomfortable. Well, I, I'm going to slightly disagree on that in that bringing in people from other companies don't go over as well. But I, I'll come back to that in, in just literally 20 seconds. But, you know, bringing in Joey Janela, if you bring him in, is he going to beat Eli Drake? Uh, you know, do you debut someone? to come in and eat a loss was probably not. And Eli, let's face it, he's already put over, to some extent, Joe Hendry on his way in. So I, I don't like the idea that we're going to debut someone in that spot. What I would like to have seen would have been a big name. And nothing against James Elworth. I, I actually like the guy. I, I like what he brings to wrestling. I really do. Um, you know, because it doesn't always have to be some massive guy, you know. It's just about having fun at times. So the whole segment, I didn't mind. But... To me now, you know, James Elworth's not going to move the needle. Okay, he's got some name recognition, but no one's going to tune in to see James Elworth on there. And the, the same goes for Joey Janela. And I know uh, half of our listeners, at least, are going to hate me for saying this, but they should have brought in a, a big Cass, an Enzo, a Ryback. Ryback would have been a good one to bring in. Um, you know, they should have brought in someone with name recognition at this point. And if their original plan was Joey Janela, I think that was a complete misstep. And I know people hate ex-WWE guys coming in. But look, Impact does need to make something that's going to pick up, you know, ratings. Whether it's streams, hits, YouTube, whatever. I don't care. And someone like Ryback, someone like Big Cass would have done that. Oh, someone like Chris Jericho would have done that, let's face it. But Joey Janela, uh, don't know the guy, might be amazing. But he wouldn't have done that. So anyway, that was, that was my quick thoughts. Anything else on that segment before we move on? Well, just to carry on what you're saying, see, and that, that's where I kind of disagree with you. Like, I don't think, and I, I think there's too much of a reliance in the past of grabbing names from, you know, here and there. Look, I'm not saying they can't sign former ex-wrestlers from that company, but have a little bit of more faith in the roster you have. They can build their own stars, but they have to put forth, you know, the effort to do so. There's talent on the roster. You just got to put them in a position to do to do just that. I mean, when we had Eli as champion, for example, you think about it, he was being overshadowed shadowed by former E guys in Johnny Impact and El Patron. So how do you expect to build stars if you're always relying on X E guys? So I just think what they got to do a better job of is, you know, assess the roster they have, elevate some people, and just work with what you got. Don't always look go to that well and be like, okay, let me get this guy. Because if you bring in a right back, He's going over. You bring in Cass, he's going over, and that is at the expense of Eli. And I think that would have been a worse than having him just run through Ellsworth. But that's just me. Yeah, no, no, I, I get where you're coming from. But, yeah, you're right. You have to bring through your own guys and make your own stars. But if no one's watching the product, then the stars that you're building aren't going to get noticed. And, you know, bringing in someone like Ryback will get 
there, someone who's a WWE fan tuning in and then seeing Brian Cage, seeing Pentagon, seeing Sammy Callahan. So I think you've got to have a balancing act with it. And I, I think where Impact or TNA have gone wrong in the past is the guy comes in and then they give him the belt. You know, and I know they did that with Aries, ironically. But, you know, that's what you don't do. You, you bring in someone to have a mid-card feud, a Ryback, to, to have a feud with Eli Drake, where Eli Drake eventually goes over. You bring it in as short-term booking. That, that's the way I would have played it. Anyway, interested to hear what our listeners think. You know, uh, you know, I've never been a fan of bringing in ex-WWE guys, but I think when you're talking about something like Bound for Glory, that's the ideal time when you do it. You build a short program like they did with Scott Steiner. Perfect example. You know, so, um, you know, that, that that's the way that I would have booked that section. Anyway, um, so Aries, is it a work or is it a shoot? What do you think? You know what, I'm in, in between at this point. And personally, I think it'd be better off if it's a shoot because I think it would show more a reflection of who he is and not the company. Because I think if this is all a work, um, I just don't see it going over well where it's going to make people be like, oh, wow, you know, that's edgy. And my biggest criticism of it is I felt Aries overshadowed two big moments um, leading up to Bound for Glory and post Bound for Glory. The first one was the Abyss Hall of Fame where they ran that angle. Um, I just want to add with Abyss, phenomenal guy. Um, for a lot of people who might not be familiar with his work in the early TNAs and mid thousands, go check it out. Um, it's a, it's unfortunate that later on he kind of got lost in the shuffle when they made him kind of cartoonish. But uh, man, 2004, 2005 Abyss, I mean, it's, it's a crazy dude. Um, you know, and they ran the angle like that. And I just kind of thought that they overshadowed a great moment for, you know, a, a great guy in Abyss. And then same thing after the match with Johnny Impact where he lost. I felt like that was a defining moment in Johnny Impact's career only to be overshadowed by uh, the events that Aries did. So instead of coming out of Bound for Glory like, oh, you know, Abyss had this nice ceremony and Johnny Impact finally captured the world championship while talking about oh was it real or was it you know fake you know is it part of storyline or was it legit it's just it's all about austin aries and i think that's unfortunate yeah i i think you're right and you know to answer the question is it work as a shoot i've got a feeling that it most probably is a work but not many people know about it and i i think that includes the roster uh, but i do think it's maybe something that aries has talked about with don Callis. Just because you've seen quite a lot of people, you know, like Brian Cage, Tessa Blanchard, who, you know, are talking about it and saying that it's not very professional. Maybe they've been told to say that, but I've got a feeling they're most probably in the dark as well. I ran a poll on Twitter, by the way. You can follow me uh, at uh, V2AdamIL for Impact Lounge, uh, if you want to follow me on Twitter. Ro will give you his in a little while as well. Um, but I ran a poll and it was pretty much split slightly in favor of a work. So... Yeah, the good thing is no one knows. And, and that is the one saving grace about this, is that if no one knows, impact management can spin this however they want, depending on what the reality is. So even if it is a work, uh, or sorry, shoot, they can kind of spin it into a storyline because no one knows the real story that's going on here other than Don Callis and Austin Aries. So uh, interesting stuff indeed. Um, anything else to add on that before we, we move on? You know, let me ask you, if it does end up being legitimate and it is a shoot, well, what are your thoughts then? Well, Austin Aries has always had a, a a bit of a, you know, a backstage attitude problem, apparently, according to the companies he's worked with. I just think he, he's, he's, he's a passionate guy who, who understands the business and likes it. Having said that, I interviewed him when he was around with Impact last time. And he's, a, he's not a nice person. He really isn't. So I can understand why people think that he's an arsehole. I really can. Um, if it is a, a shoot, then I hope that they never employ him again. I really do. And we'll know soon enough, because if he does show up, then it's definitely a work, as we know. But uh, I, I really hope they don't ever employ him again, which kind of leads me on to uh, other news from this week. Alberto is back. Yes, Al Patron is going to be debuting back with Impact again very, very shortly. I'm only joking. It was a false rumor on the internet. Apparently, earlier on in the week, all the dirt sheets were reporting that Scott Damore and Don Callis were in discussions with bringing Alberto back. 
Uh, what did you think when you read this? Did you, did you silently weep or were you uh, very happy? I, <laughs> I can guarantee you it wasn't the latter. Um, I, I'm guilty I fell for it just because the site that I follow, you know, usually a credible source. So I had went out and retweeted it. But I said, they're, they're rumors, so we don't know. The thing that bothered me, I said, just if in the event that it's not true and we found out later it's not the fact that that stuff got out there i i feel like it's one of two things either management is tone deaf or there's really somebody out there trying to sabotage the company because the fact that you're even in discussions given what he did i want to say was it around that time when they were doing impact versus lucha underground where he no showed they took a stand and you know pretty much said get the hell out of here because that's one of the many problems that's plagued the company in, in its prior um, history where they were bringing guys in over and people weren't respecting the company. You figure we can go over there, do whatever we want. They're going to put the belt on us and there's no accountability for our behavior. So for them getting rid of El Patron for no showing, they really put their foot down. And I think they earned a lot of respect in a lot of uh, wrestling fans and um, writers, etc. as uh point of view so i just kind of thought just the fact that it got out that they were even in talks just the fact that that type of rumor got out there that bothered me because i'm like where could that come from but like i said you know it's been false i mean who knows we could still see it reemerge, and we end up seeing him in the vegas tapings and then you know it'll be a uh, uh, moment so we'll just have to see (laughs) It will be a crowd indeed. And, and you know what? I, I was, I think, one of the few fans of his last run. I, I enjoyed him, you know, his whole time in, in Impact in the last couple of years. I thought, he, you know, he was maybe getting a hard deal from everyone who'd been criticizing. But the way that he walked out, he's another one who should be blackballed from Impact forever and ever now. So, uh, yeah, so there you go. Right. Um, we've got about eight, nine minutes left of the show. So, Ro, what's been on your mind this week? Yes, I I know we've uh, talked about this back and forth for the longest time, but the X Division Championship, and I, I want your take on it. I've accepted that the fact this is our mid-card title, okay? But I find myself wondering, is it time to kind of revamp the title? Or I don't, I'm not say so much the title, but the division in a sense. And what I mean by that is, Here's the thing. The division is predicated off of it means no limits, no weight class. Okay, but we see a lot of the people who normally compete in the division have that style with Brian Cage, who's champion. He's able to do that style. My question is, if this is the mid card title, how are you going to get some of these guys like we're going to assume that Sammy Callahan is next in line for the title, but he obviously doesn't scream X division style wrestler. So their feud is probably going to be just a standard match. I'm just wondering, is it a, do they scrap the division entirely and just treat it like a solid mid card that um, heavyweights and guys on the lighter side can challenge for, or do they bring in another title? Cause I'm just worried that the state of where the title is right now if it is a mid card title, it's not going to be, and even though the name is X Division, uh, X Division, we're not going to see a lot of X Division guys challenging for it. And I just feel like you can't call something the X Division Championship and not have an X Division wrestler challenging or being champion. So, w- what are your thoughts on it? Yeah, you're absolutely right. I, I think they desperately need a mid card title. And I know that they're using the X Division as a mid card title. And, and I think that's wrong. You know, I, I don't mind. Brian Cage having it, I don't mind Sammy Callahan having it, but they would be better feuding over the equivalent of an intercontinental title in WWE. You know, uh, and the X Division has got a legacy which should be respected. You know, it, it's got a heritage, it's got a legacy, and it's a certain type of match. And as you quite rightly said, Sammy Callahan, who incidentally, by the way, as we're talking about the news, signed a long-term deal with, with uh, Impact. We'll touch on that in a second. Um, uh, no problem holding it, but I mean, why, why can't he be, you know, holding a proper, even grand championship, you know, if you want to, to go back to the most recent mid-card belt? You know, X Division shouldn't be the, the title that he's going over. And this has come down to bad booking of all the belts. You know, we talked about LA Action have the belts going into that match. Uh, and Brian Cage should have had the belt going into the, the, the six-man match. Um, 
so I do think they need to have an overhaul of of what the X division is and then find something else for the other guys because they can have three belts. They don't all have to be defended every week or have their storyline progressed. You know, and at the moment, they're struggling a bit with that, with time for everyone. You know, we didn't see Matt Seidel the other day, for example. We haven't seen Joe Hendry and Grado. Well, maybe Grado, thank God. Uh, you know, so there's, they're struggling with time. But, you know, I still think that we need to, to define. Let us know in the comments uh, because, you know, we, we do we do really you know appreciate it when you guys comment those kind of things. Do you, do you want to add anything else on that before I, I move on to Sammy Callahan there, Ro? Um, no, not really. I'm interested to see people's thoughts. I just found myself watching. I just feel like we, we can't expect they're going to challenge for the world title. And I think in part of building new stars, a lot of stars that we've seen in from different companies, normally they, there's kind of like that path where they capture that mid-card championship, whether it's a television United States championship before they go on to the world title and we don't have that we've always just had the x division and that's the reason why you see some of the world former world champions are ex former x division guys are equivalent to cruiserweights or light heavyweights so i just think if that's going to be our mid card belt they probably need to do some fine tuning where it's not just tailored to to just a specific uh, style but just anybody it's a true mid card belt where you're having cruiserweights and you're having heavyweights challenge for it because we see now Brian Cage, most of his title defenses have been against just X Division guys. And like I said, you know, final point, we're leading up to, we're gonna, I'm guessing we're going to get him versus Sammy Callahan. While Sammy Callahan in his own right is a small guy, he doesn't wrestle that style. So, you know, what are they wrestling for? Yeah, well, the, the, the problem they've got is that you look at Brian Cage and Sammy Callahan, that could be for the world title. You look at Johnny Impact versus Phoenix, that could be an X Division match. You know, so at the moment they're building X Division better than they are the world title. Let's give Johnny Impact a chance because you know he's just come through Austin Aries, but you know uh, that they need to do. You know, to me it would have made sense to be the other way around, but there you go. It is what it is. We'll see how it plays out. I mentioned Sammy Callahan's got a new long-term deal. Fantastic news. That's all I can say. This this guy is the real deal. He's a company man. You know, he's a real draw. You know, I know that's his Twitter handle, but he is a real draw, isn't he, uh, to the product. So he says he wants to fix impact. Um, so there you go. Uh, what do you think of that one? Um, I mean, I'm expecting BQ to drop something and really elaborate on the stuff. So all I'll just say is that's a good get. I think what they need to start doing now is start planning for 2019 and who are going to be some of the main event players. And obviously he's going to be one of them. I fully expect him in some time in 2019 to carry that impact world championship. So uh, before I move on to my final piece of news, which I, I want to close the show with tonight, there was another new signing this week. And uh, I, we're straying into to spoiler territory, although they did mention it on this week's Impact. There was a new knockout who signed as well. Maybe we'll cover that a little bit more next week after we see, hey, I think she's debuting next week, is she? Or Yes. Yeah. So uh, can we? Uh, you said that they revealed the name on Impact. I'll be honest with you, I haven't quite caught up yet. So uh, can we say who it is? Jordan Grace. Um, I I know of her. I've never seen any of her work, but I know her. One of the biggest things that I've known that she's done is in one of the uh, battle royals that the Ring of Honor had, she eliminated Brian Cage. So who knows? Maybe her debut might start up our first uh, intergender match in Impact Wrestling. Well, they've had one before, but yeah. So that leads us on to our final story of the day. And this is just a little bit of fun that I saw on the internet. Now, as listeners to the show or, or anything that Ro and I have done over the last 12 months, two years now, I think two years, happy anniversary, dude. Um, uh, yeah, we, we are obviously huge Impact fans and we do name drop WWE fans, WWE now and again, those kind of things. And, you know, we're quite critical of the typical WWE fan. Don't get me wrong. There's wrestling fans who are WWE fans as well. You know, I sometimes tune in. I'm not a huge fan of the product. But anyway, there is a story that is going to make me have a bit of a laugh at their expense. Here we go. So on October the 16th, uh, I don't know if you're aware of this, Ro. Hopefully you're not the one caught up in this. On October the 16th, YouTube was out for a couple of hours. I don't know if you know this. YouTube went down for a couple of hours. Now, what has this got to do with wrestling here? Well, uh, apparently during the outage of YouTube, Pornhub hits went up by 21%. So people can get on YouTube, so they went on Pornhub instead. Now, you're most probably thinking, what has this got to do with wrestling? 
Um, well, apparently the fifth most searched term during those couple of hours that YouTube was out was WWE on Pornhub. Um, so what's the moral of this story? Well, as I always suspected, WWE fans are complete wankers. There you go. Uh, <laughs> so uh, that's this week's news. Hope you've enjoyed the show. Uh, I said earlier on that Ro was going to give you a shout out. Follow him on Twitter. You really do need to follow us both on Twitter so you can hear our views as the news breaks each week. So Ro, what have you got for us on your Twitter handle? Yeah, it's RT Great underscore. And outside of Impact Wrestling, I'm a big sports fan I'm and a video game fan. So any conversation i'm always open for that as well but yeah i always make sure to share my thoughts on episodes of impact as well as pay-per-views so um and i always like to engage with people and see your guys' thoughts as well there you go so uh if you're to follow me as i said it's at the letter to the number adam il for impact lounge have a great week or we'll catch you next time